He was one of the most violent tyrants of all time. A father of communism. By his hands alone, he killed millions of people. Mao Zedong was simply one of those people who believed the ends justify the means. Or really, is it quite like that? Perhaps he was forced to. Or maybe something else happened entirely. Maybe we should delve deeper. Mao Zedong was born on December 26, 1893, in Shaoshan Village, Hunan. Here, Mao went to school and was able to learn some politics from books and newspapers, despite his humble upbringing. Even when he was young, Mao proved to have a strong spirit and a desire to do good. During the widespread famine of Shaoshan, Mao's father, who was a farmer, had his grain seized by peasants. Mao believed that these actions were wrong, but he had sympathy for them nonetheless. At just age 13, Mao's father arranged a marriage for him. However, Mao was a fierce critic of arranged marriage, and because of this did not accept it. These actions had consequences. Mao's unappreciated wife was disgraced and died young. This is Mao's story, and the reason why he is so controversial. Mao was willing to do what he believed was right, despite the repercussions to himself or others. Mao went to many protests in his early years and was a staunch critic of the absolute imperial monarchy. Sometime between 1911 and 1912, Mao joined the Republican Xinhai Revolution as a private soldier. The revolution was somewhat successful and ended with the monarchy being abolished. However, to avoid more conflict, the former imperial general, Yan Shikai, was placed as the president in a compromise to quickly take down the empire. After more education, books, warfare, and leading protests, Mao began writing articles in a popular local magazine. Governor Zhang Jingzhao ended up banning the association, but Mao continued to publish regardless. Mao wrote frequently on women's rights and advocated for liberation of women in Chinese society. Later in his life, while a revolutionary, Mao would implement measures to increase women's political participation. Mao became headmaster of a school and married. At this time, Mao adopted communism as what he believed China needed more than any other form of government. China could recognize and understand communism as a way to combine their strength against tyrannical leaders for a common good for all people. In Shanghai on July 23, 1921, the first session of the National Congress of the Communist Party of China was held with Soviet Russian endorsement, and Mao was one of the 13 delegates present. Mao began work immediately, fighting literacy by joining the YMCA mass education movement. He successfully helped the Enyan coal miners strike and formed schools and cooperatives, and engaged local intellectuals, gentry, military officers, merchants, Red Gang Dragonheads, and even church clergy. In 1927, Chiang Kai-shek led a massacre against the communists of China and killed approximately 20,000 of its members in an event known as the White Terror. Despite a war-torn China, Mao placed all of his hope in a peasant militia and formed what today is known as the Chinese Red Army. Mao was appointed commander-in-chief and began leading uprisings with the help of the people. Then, Soviet Russia took more direct control of the Communist Party of China, removing old leadership and installing 28 Soviet-educated Chinese communists. 
Mao did not believe the Russians had China's best interest at heart and became independent of the party in 1930, creating the Southwest Jiangxi Provincial Soviet Government. Mao did all of this while suffering from his own internal struggles. Mao's wife and his sister were both captured and beheaded by the opposing party. Mao was also suffering from tuberculosis. Now, one might believe that this must have sent Mao into a rage and caused him to be a tyrant. However, the opposite is true. Throughout Mao's leadership, members believed Mao was being too moderate and lenient for a revolutionary. This caused internal problems. But after Mao was forced to reposition his 100,000 troops over 5,600 miles in 370 days in 1934, with only 7,500 surviving, Mao became the undisputed communist leader for the rest of his life due to his deeds, despite not having a formal title at the time. Mao named General Zhu Di to be commander-in-chief of the Red Army. By this point, many people in China joined Mao's movement, and after several decisive battles, China was unified. The Soviets had covertly backed Mao, and the U.S. had backed Mao's enemies. As a result, the Soviets were all too eager to grind their heel into the back of China. Mao was forced to revolutionize China the best he could, the fastest he could. In 1951, Mao eradicated opium consumption in the country. Mao also began the Hundred Flowers Campaign, in which it was encouraged to speak out on different ways China should be governed. One of Mao's saddest accomplishments was the Great Leap Forward, in which he tried to industrialize China, leading to a great famine. China had widespread natural disasters such as drought and flooding that destroyed crops at this time. And all the while, Mao's staff exaggerated or lied about the crop yield all the way up the chain of command. When Mao got the information, he followed policy and sold the supposed excess yield to other countries, all the while not knowing that people in his nation were beginning to starve. Mao was greatly disturbed by what had happened and vowed to no longer eat meat. Mao was ultimately successful in his attempt to split from Russia, and paid off all of China's debts early, and split from Russia in around 1961. In truth, Mao was surrounded by hostile American military bases, and the split from Russia only increased turmoil. But Mao once again went with his greater good approach in an isolated China. After shrugging off outside rule, Mao implemented free health care, developed nuclear weapons, and launched submarines and satellites. Living standards, education, Advances in science and technology continued to improve despite some civil unrest. During Mao's rule, China's population actually grew from 550 million to 900 million, and life expectancy in China also rose. Mao gave up much of his power well before he died and tried to keep China unified until his last day on earth. As a result, most of China is very devoted to Mao to this day. Revolution is not a dinner party, nor an essay, nor a painting, nor a piece of embroidery. It cannot be so refined, so leisurely and gentle, so temperate, kind, courteous, restrained, and magnanimous. A revolution is an insurrection, an act of violence by which one class overthrows another. Mao Zedong, February 1927. See you next time.